We're going to move on to the village board candidates. Um, I would ask everyone to just take a quick look at the ballot because in retrospect, I realize when we put these together, it, it's probably a little confusing. There are three four-year positions, trustee positions for the village board um, that are currently open. Uh, and we have two candidates for those three positions, specifically Catherine and Stephen, who you'll hear from in just a minute. There was also a, an open two-year position uh, that Mary Cole has graciously volunteered to put her name in as a candidacy for the two-year position, okay? Um, and you'll notice there's no village clerk sitting up here. Um, that remains an open position. Uh, no one stepped up for that position. So uh, just to be clear, if it does come to a tally vote after we hear from the candidates, um, Mary is the sole candidate for the two-year position. Catherine and Stephen have graciously agreed to volunteer for a four-year position, and Regis and the village is still looking for a, a third four-year term, okay? Just, I wanted to make that clear before we got into the statements in the Q&A. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and start with Mary. You have two minutes to uh, give your statement of candidacy. And again, keep that microphone nice and tight to your, your mouth because myself included, uh, it, as you get away, it doesn't project as well. Thank you. Hello. Sandy Berg, you thought you were nervous. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I have a color-coded binder and pens. Uh, my name is Mary Cole. I am 28 years old. Um, I grew up in the North Shore. I grew up in Deerfield. I moved here in 2020, so I've not been here that long. Um, I will say, when I first moved to Lake Bluff, I, despite growing up on the North Shore, I don't think I really understood what Lake Bluff was. It is the cutest town in all of the North Shore. It is, it is lovely. Um, I feel like I should probably tell you a little bit more about myself than the other candidates because I haven't been here that long. Um, I'm an attorney. I own my own law firm with the best law partner ever, Patrick Brady. Um, we work in Gurney. Um, I'm probably a bit of a non-traditional candidate. I'm not married. I don't have kids who go to your adorable schools, but I do like your library. Um, I don't own a home here. I rent. Um, from a cute flat on Washington. I do hope to be a homeowner because I do love Lake Bluff and I want to <coughs> stay here. Um, but I think with that brings a bit of a fresh perspective um, because I'm a bit newer to the area, but I'm just as in love with it as you guys are. Um, I grew up in Deerfield, like I said. My mother is an immigrant. She came here at age 30 and opened her own business, speaking very little English and still has a business that's been going for almost 40 years in Deerfield, Mimi Cole Designers. Um, the reason that matters is because growing up in a household where a small business, family-owned business, was um, the primary source of income, I think I have a different perspective on the importance of both the local government and the community supporting local businesses. And I think in this community especially, the businesses here are more intimate and closely connected with the community itself. You don't see a lot of outside businesses or chains coming in to Lake Bluff, which I think helps maintain the quaintness. Um, I have time. I have to hand it over. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Catherine, go ahead. Hi, my name is Catherine Hatch. Um, I live lived in Lake Bluff since 2013. I have two children, um, two girls who attend this school. And we take advantage of all of the resources of Lake Bluff, the pools, the libraries, the golf course, the beach. And I just want to make sure I feel like it's my obligation to help serve the community going forward. Um, I know that the, it takes a lot of work to be on the village board. I've been the clerk since two th for 18 months. Um, I was a recently appointed trustee to, um, after Kate Brand vacated her spot because she moved. Um, because of my experience on the board as the village clerk, I am very well versed in all of the issues that are facing our community and the various um, arguments on both sides of those issues. I do believe that institutional knowledge, as was spoken previously, is very important, and I think that I bring that to the table when talking about continuing on on a four-year term. Um, I am also a lawyer. I practice family law in Lake Forest. I recently became an owner of that law firm as well. I serve on the Lake County Bar Association board. I'm currently the first vice president. I've been on that board for, 
I can't even remember how long, it must be 10 years now. Um, I will be the president of that board next year, and I do know from serving on that board with a bunch of lawyers that collaborative um, thinking and, col and getting decisions made collaboratively is very important. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Vote Lake Bluff, uh, for having me. So Steve Rappin, uh, I am currently a village uh, trustee and uh, really filled, uh, filled in for the vacant spot from Regis Charlot when he became the president. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've lived in Lake Bluff, first on the west side and now on the east uh, it, with my wife, my three kids. Uh, they've gone through the schools, they've gone through the park districts, and boy, did we luck into a really, really wonderful place to, to, to raise our kids. Um, in terms of professionally, I am, uh, own a real estate company. We have 100 apartments in 12 different states. Keeps me uh, busy uh, during my day job, but uh, has taught me to be a generally a, a good business person. I have other extracurricular activities that I'm involved in. I am a trustee at the Ravinia Festival. I'm uh, on the executive committee for the uh, National Apartment Association and former president of the Chicagoland Apartment Association. So I like to volunteer. This is, this is right up my alley. Um, I've, like I've said, I've been a, a trustee for about the past two years. I was previously on the ABR, the Architectural Review Board here, the Downtown Development Committee. Lake Bluff is, in my mind, a place that is for all of us. And in my 21 years here in Lake Bluff, it has transformed significantly. Uh, I know that after 2009, um, there were a lot of uh, folks that were kind of aging. 30 seconds, I got it. Uh, that, that were aging, uh, and there are a lot of new folks that have moved in, and we've seen a different vibe here over the past 20 years since I've been here of, of youth, of activity downtown. I think it's really, really important that we are representative of all ages. I, I want to make sure that everybody at any age, including those on fixed incomes, those that are seniors, those that are empty nesters, have safe, affordable homes to live in, and that our taxes are held reasonably low to accommodate that. Thank you. Oh. Okay, um, we've got a few questions from the audience, um, and one is um, consistent with uh, a question that Boat Lake Bluff would like to first start out by asking you. The village faces some major issues with the need for improvement to our water and road infrastructure. I think we can all agree on that. As a board member, how would you address complicated issues like this? Stephen, feel free to start us off. Sure, I'm happy, uh, happy to start. So, you know, the safety and the ability of our residents to travel on our roads and to know that their home and their neighborhood is not going to flood is imperative. So if you ask me of all of the priorities within this village, even though that's not the sexiest thing, because it's kind of like putting a, a new furnace in your house, you're redoing what's already been there, it is imperative. We need safe, practical roads and for there not to be any flooding. I know that uh, Regis Charlot, our village president, is here. It is his top priority. He is working with staff. Uh, you know, to identify funds to make substantial strides in that area. And uh, as a village, potential village trustee, I would put my full backing and effort uh, behind making those improvements happen as well. As Steve touched on, the, um, the main concern in that area is financial. It is very expensive, as you can imagine, to replace all of our infrastructure and our aging pipes. So to that end, I do think it's important to find um, partnerships with both the federal and the state and the county agencies that can help us find the funds in order to improve that infrastructure. I do know that our village staff has done um, an amazing job trying to plug the holes and trying to fill in gaps where they can, and they have done to the best of their ability, and I know they will continue to do so, and I would, I would support them in all of their efforts. Hello. So I probably have a little bit less to say on this because I am newer, but I will say that as far as the value of infrastructure would, would go, is in, my, in my mind, it's, in, it's not, a, not a question. You have to make sure that the very basics of this town and its functionality, whether it be its pipes or making sure that your land and your basements aren't being flooded, that's, I don't think that's um, negotiable. So it's just a matter of figuring out a way to make it work for everyone here. And that would be our job, so. Very good, thank you candidates. Okay, next question, this came from the audience. Um, I think we can all agree that one of the things that makes this town so very special are the special events. From the 4th of July parade, to the Criterium, to It's a Wonderful Life, the holiday show, uh, the Veterans Day and Memorial Day celebrations, 
all wonderful events. So the question is, would it be wise to set up a committee to be responsible for these special events? We'll start with Catherine. I think setting up a committee is a great idea. I think the tough part is finding volunteers to give their time to such committees. So it is difficult when you already have people expending so much time on things that they're already doing and all the committees that we already do have in place. Um, but I do think it's very important. I think that we do consider those um, events when we are deliberating every other week. Um, we also did have a committee for the 125th, or the celebration of Lake Bluff, and that turned out very well. They did the fireworks, we had the, the thing at the park district this year, and I think encouraging those events is what gives Lake Bluff its charm. So from what I've observed, um, it seems like everything, all the events that I've seen have run very well, very enthusiastically. So I guess the first question I would have is why com what a committee would have to offer in addition to what, what's already um, what I've observed. Um, and would it be one committee that would serve for all those events or would they be separate subcommittees? I think I would have to hear more from the actual public to know whether or not that's something that um, would be beneficial and who would be willing to step up and do it. Thank you. Yeah, the, the events in Lake Bluff are incredible. I mean, from the block parties to the 4th of July uh, to, you know, almost every weekend in the summer you can find an event. So, and that has increased so substantially over the past 20 years and it's wonderful to see. I was not aware that uh, there is a lack of coordination among that or a need for a committee, so I really would want to kind of discuss that with people who are feeling a need for that and understanding are we tripping over, you know, dates, are, are there things that are, are not being done. I, I have not noticed a great need for that, but I have noticed that we have excellent events here and would like to see more of them. And again, this may be a question that some of you on at the table are in a better position to answer than others, but if there is no candidate for village clerk, what do we do? Um, let's have Stephen start this well, and I, then work it this way. I have seen how it works without a village clerk because we don't have a village clerk right now. And uh, it is fair to say that, uh, that Drew, Drew Irvin, who is our village administrator, does a very effective uh, job at that. It's not ideal but I don't think it would be a showstopper if we didn't have a village clerk, but I am very certain that Regis and other people in leadership in this uh, community can find, find somebody to step into that role. So I agree, when I vacated my spot, it has been empty since. <laughs> Drew's done great, but it is a hard job to do. You know, he does two things at once then during the meetings. Um, I would definitely, I'll spend the rest of my time trying to figure out someone to run for that position, encourage people, beg them to do it. It's so enlightening and it is such a good experience. You learn so much about how village, how village workings actually come to fruition and how all of these amazing things that we experience here are actually all the behind the scenes stuff that goes into it. I think we should play eeny, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> Yeah, um, no, I, I think that I will attest that Catherine Hatch will find someone because that's how I got here. <laughs> so um, I, I think that there's a reason a clerk is on here because we need one. It sounds like it's not um, going to stop the show from missing one for a little bit, but there's in this town, there's no way that there isn't someone out there that would be enthusiastic to step up and, and, and you know, fill the role. So we're going to leave that on Cat. Okay, next question. Uh, we'll start with Mary. Uh, perhaps some of you alluded to this in prior responses, but what is your number one priority for the village as a board trustee and why? I would say making sure that the downtown um, area is serving uh, the community at its best. I love the downtown area. It's quaint, it's friendly, it's welcoming. Um, making sure that the businesses that are there are being served by the people as well. Um, because I do think that having, going into a store and knowing that you can identify three people there and they live a few blocks down, I, I think that there's a value to that. And I think there's a value of knowing that your money is going to a family that's giving back to the community. So I think that um, making sure that the downtown is preserved and as vital as um, it can be would be my priority. So stormwater management is not the most exciting topic. However, it is such an important thing facing our village right now, and it is what I feel passionate about. I believe that we have to make sure we're using 
um, existing infrastructure as well as sustainable um, infrastructure and development going forward, whether that means working with the best way to deal storm water management is to work with what's there. And so if we can make that more accommodating through natural um, natural development, such as rain, there's rainwater ponds you can have, you can have roofs that have grass on top, you can implement pervious services, things that'll, that'll also help accommodate the stormwater that doesn't have to do with pipes, it's more preventative in nature, and I think if we look to the future to try to prevent these things rather than trying to, on the back end, fix them consistently, that's, um, that's the way that we'll be sustainable moving forward. For me, it would be making sure that all residents in all phases of life have a welcoming and, and practical home here in Lake Bluff and feel welcome here. Uh, I, I think many of us know that there is, is not a huge diversity in housing here. I watched Christine Lechtinger, former president of this village, lived in a beautiful house directly across from me down on Scranton Avenue. She was all by herself and she was living in a 3,500 square foot home because there wasn't another place for her to move to that suited her needs, that was smaller and you know where the taxes were gonna be a little bit less. So for me, we have a, a couple of opportunities for housing within Lake Bluff, whether it's the Stonebridge area or Block 3 or over by the open lands off of 176. And I, because I'm a real estate person, I would like to spend my leadership time trying to help us figure out how we can diversify our housing and make it work for everybody, including empty nesters, seniors, and people on fixed income. Thank you all. We'll have Catherine start us off um, for the next question, which is, where do we find grants for our village, whether federal or state or, or otherwise, or do we? So yes, our, our village works very hard, the administration, at finding grants. We've been very successful in the last year in you know working with Jawa, which is the Lake County Storm Management, Stormwater Management Committee, essentially. It, it addresses it for um, all of Lake County, but it's specifically us as well. We also deal with federal grants, such as the bridge grant that finished the bike path bridge this past summer. Um, anything that we're not able to find, which, and the people who do this is the village staff, right? So they put in all their effort. There are people who are um, designated specifically to find grants, because that's how we are able to do finance our village. Most of our infrastructure development, um, including you know, the big, the big development that's gonna happen at the beach this summer um, with the Water Reclamation District, there's a lot of different districts and agencies that we can work with. Um, I don't know much about the current state of grants other than what Ms. Hatch just explained. Um, I guess the only thing I would have to add is in the event that we're, we're finding um, ourselves in a difficult position with regard to finding appropriate money for grants and we think that that's out there, I think that reaching out to villages and townships that maybe have a more successful um, history with whatever grant or whatever funding we're looking for um, in that respect figuring out how they did it because if they can do it there's no reason why we can't um, grants play a, a critical role um, for lake bluff it allows us to proceed forward on capital projects we otherwise couldn't afford you know other than than you know sales tax we want to minimize the impact, the financial impact to our residents. The more grants we can get, the greater sales tax we can get, the less burden there is on our residents. So I think having the initiative, you know, whether it's in the stormwater going to Lake County, or I know Brad Schneider has offered up uh, money uh, from, from Lake County or from, his, from the federal government as well. I think having a concerted effort for all of our capital initiatives uh, is, is imperative. Frankly, I don't know a ton about grants. That's really Drew's role. I know that Regis plays a role in that, but I do think it should be heightened uh, in terms of identifying sources, again, to try and take the impact of any costs off of, of the great residents of Lake Bluff. Okay, Steve, hang on to the mic. Sure. We'll get you started. Uh, what do you feel is missing from Lake Bluff? Not a lot. I, I thought about that uh, quite a bit. You know, for from, from me, uh, well, I guess the one thing that I think is the diversified housing, which I talked about before. So that is, that is very sub specifically something that I think we can add. Beyond that, I think our, our community functions really, really well. I think we do a great job of catering to the younger folks. I think we do a, a great job of, of creating a, a really engaging environment and welcoming environment that is true to our essence, 
We're a small town of a little bit over 5,000 people, yet we have this amazingly big imprint. Everybody who lives in Lake Bluff is proud to be here in Lake Bluff. There's not a lot of unhappiness here. So for me, uh, if I were to be a village trustee again going forward, my role would be to continue to understand what is working to make sure that we are continuing to enhance what's working for everybody at every stage of life. But I don't think there's a ton that's not working. I'd like to see more diversified housing. To join in with Steve, I do think affordable housing is the number one thing missing in Lake Bluff, whether that be more apartment rentals or flats, or if you just have a different view of housing. So for example, having a public-private partnership is something that we should consider when it comes to developing affordable housing, whether or not that's a new development um, on the north side of 176, or if that is a development in block three. We need to come up with outside of the box ideas because right now nothing is, it's stale. There are no, there's no movement forward on what we truly believe as a village, what we wanna see is affordable housing. There's no agreement. And so I think that we need to reach out to the public to gain a greater understanding of exactly what this village wants to see in the future for themselves when it comes to housing. Well, now I'm gonna be a broken record. I agree with both Steve and Catherine. Um, I personally can say that it's been a struggle. I live in an apartment and I have every intention of buying a home here, but it is, it is a struggle to find um, something reasonably priced for me and I own my own business. Um, I do think that finding or a way to maybe to address that would be a huge um, plus for Lake Bluff. Okay, Mary, we, I think I got everyone, right? Uh, Mary, we'll have you answer this next one. What are the plans for instituting a program for food recycling or composting? Um, I don't have a plan, but I do agree that, I, that Lake Bluff could benefit from having a better system for recycling. I think everyone here cares a lot about the environment. We all benefit from the lovely environment in Lake Bluff. The, you know, there's nature walks, there's bike rides, we have a beach, um, but I personally don't feel like as of right now, there's a very, um, um, a very solid process in place for everyone to utilize. So currently, they're, they're going to launch a, a program in, my, in the West Terrace where I live to help with um, composting. And there will be compost sites put out around the neighborhood. It's going to be a pilot program to see the participation and how it works. And hopefully that will encourage people to take advantage of our recycling and our waste management. We do, as the village, often have waste management come in and talk to us about all of their programming and what they actually offer. And the villagers will be given a bucket or a receptacle to put in your village, your waste, your food waste, and they will come and they will pick it up. But like I said, we are launching a pilot program. I think it's starting in January or in the spring. Uh, just to clarify, I think you said West Terrace. I think North Terrace. I know there's one, right? North, North Terrace. Terrace. So for those of you who live in the West Terrace, hopefully someday. But we're going to get it piloted in the North Terrace. Stephen, go ahead. Well, that sounded like a really good planted question for Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> she has a lot of friends out there. Uh, so uh, composting, you know, is not something that I think about a ton. We do compost at our house. I have a son who went to Lake Forest High School. He's now an environmental uh, you know, major at Northwestern University. Uh, I think that Lake Bluff in general, so I'll go beyond composting, sustainability um, is, is within the essence of, of who Lake Bluff is and, and environmentally friendly. And more than just composting, I think there are probably a number of things that we could do to enhance our environmental, our, our clean environmental fo footprint upon this kind of hallowed ground we call Lake Bluff. So I don't have a really good specific answer about composting, but I knew, do know that uh, sustainability uh, is within our DNA and that it's something that probably should be raised a little bit at the board level. Thank you. Okay, two more questions. Uh, Catherine, we'll have you start this second to last one. What are the plans, if any, for parking by the lake for activities? <laughs> So parking by the lake has not come up in my tenure on the board. We are dealing with parking in general for the downtown area and Lake Bluff in general. Right now we are looking to utilize the Metro parking lot um, more than it has been and to, to put signage and other things out there so people know like a big blue P so for parking. That's for Barbara. Um, but we do, we do, we are aware we have a, we just completed a parking study for downtown and we actually do have 
um, an adequate amount of parking according to the latest cons consult study. Um, when it comes to the lake, the only time that I have face this issue all on the board is we are right now dealing with, I believe it's Simpson Avenue and the parking there because for the residents it does become an issue on these narrower side streets down by the lake. So there, um, we do have to balance protecting both the residential interest as well as the interest in the lake. So I, I live at uh, Scranton in, in Maple, so I really get a good sense of beach traffic uh, and, and parking. And uh, I, I, you know, we've reduced parking by the lake over the past couple of years because those north-south uh, roads close to the lake, Simpson, and, and I don't, there's no parking on Sunrise, and then there was another street where at least some parking was taken away. So there's less than there used to be. But I can tell you, even on, on the busiest, other than July 4th, there doesn't seem to me to be a, a problem with parking for the beach in, unless you're disabled in some way, shape, or form, in which I think there's an opportunity to go down that ramp and be at, at the parking uh, area there. There are cars that make it to my house occasionally, again, at Maple uh, and, uh, and Scranton. Uh, that's a couple of days a year, not all that often. And beyond that, it's really a two-block a two walk at most. Um, so I don't see that as a major issue, but it may be for some people, and I just don't recognize it. I could definitely see for some of the residents on the more narrow streets um, in between, you know, Scranton and Central, that being an issue. Um, personally, I was kind of impressed that for having such a fantastic, attractive beach that everyone loves going to, that there wasn't more traffic. So maybe I misunderstand that issue a bit. Perhaps that there's um, a bit more need for attention in that area. Um, but I guess, like Steve, I always was quite impressed with how many people managed to be down there without there being too much, I guess, traffic. Okay, I lied. I have two more questions. Um, here's one that is near and dear to a lot of our hearts, I'm sure. Gas-operated lawn equipment is a hazard, i.e. no emission standards, and a nuisance, the noise. What are your thoughts on addressing this issue? Mary, start us off. I'm going to pass this. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand um, both sides of this issue. I think that it is difficult to take people's um, leaf blowers and gas <laughs> operated um, lawnmowers away. I understand the noise. I think that there are ways to address that with ordinances and when you can and cannot start your lawn care in Lake Bluff, which is near and dear to this village's heart. We have amazing manicured lawns. Um, however, I do understand um, that it is a nuisance early in the morning and that we can control it in that respect. So this topic is pillow talk at the Rappin House. Um, my wife works from home most of the time and the leaf blowers in particular are a noise nuisance. Um, you come out on a Saturday morning, eight o'clock, I think is, is when they can start up and um, they, they're one, I think two stroke, you know, they have a ton of pollution, they're incredibly loud, they are challenging to be around. So, you know, from my standpoint, I, I think it's worth a, a real discussion. You know, I don't know the pros and cons on both sides. I know that if all of a sudden you took away those leaf blowers and, and those lawnmowers, those gas powered from, uh, from the landscapers, you'd have a lot less landscapers in Lake Bluff or they'd have to be investing in more uh, high, high end equipment, which is obviously gonna raise the cost of landscaping in, in Lake Bluff because there wouldn't be as much competition and they'd have to have you know, higher end technology. So I, I think that one is very worth a good, deep discussion. I don't know where I'll ultimately land, but I do know it's a nuisance. Okay, I've saved the best question for last, and kudos to whoever wrote it, this is terrific. When will Lake Bluff have a store that sells bread and milk? <laughs> Well, I, I do remember when there was the original, before the village market, there was an old grocery store that was here, and they sold milk and bread. Uh, and I, did you own that? Because you're, you're kind of smiling. Okay. You remember <laughs> it too? Okay. Um, it wasn't the most beautiful building, but you could get bread and butter and milk and other things. And then we had the village market there uh, for a little while, and then we had... Uh, uh, Wisma. Was Wisma. Thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Um, I was hoping that where Prairie is going, now Prairie is a wonderful uh, addition to our, our town and to be able to get a cup of coffee and hang out somewhere, but I was hoping maybe there was going to be something a little bit more practical there. We do, in Lake Bluff, uh, have grocery stores. Heinen's a wonderful grocery store. Um, but on the east side, 
it is a challenge, uh, and I don't think there's any plans anytime soon, so I don't have a good answer for that. I've asked myself this question many times, especially when I was a new mom. It was very difficult. We had just moved up from the city um, to find somewhere that was even open to get milk if it was later at night or if it was just too early in the morning. Um, however, I did speak with various owners, both of Wisma and of B Market, about this exact issue, and their, their response was enlightening in that it was hard to keep perishable items because people were not buying them at a fast enough rate in order for them to be able to store and make a profit off of these items. So I'm not sure if that is a practical thing that can come into this into the east side of Lake Bluff. Like Steve said, we do have um, Heinen's that's very close. And I do know that you know access is, is a huge thing because having that little liquor store next to Inavasi, I think is very convenient and easy to grab things in and out of there. Um, so I, I, although I appreciate that I would like to have a store like that. I just don't know if it's practically possible. It sounds like we've all had this question. Um, I, I do think that having somewhere a little bit more local so you don't necessarily have to drive to Heinen's or all the way to the Jewel would be very helpful. It sounds like unless, I mean, unless the town would want to create another building, which I don't really think necessarily is um, in the cards right now, it might be just a matter of waiting for the opportune time. If one of the stores is in a position where maybe there's vacant space later, that's something to consider. Um, it is desirable, but again, if it's not gonna, it doesn't sound like it's very practical right now. Okay, thank you all. Well, it is very clear to me that the three of you came to this meeting tonight uh, incredibly well prepared, so thank you for that. And I'm sure the audience would agree with me that uh, the Lake Bluff Board uh, will be in very capable hands under your leadership and guidance for the next few years. So thank you again. Please. Okay. Now comes the third directive of our meetings tonight, and that is the voting. And, and again, this is your meeting, so we will leave it in your hands. Uh, how many folks, uh, just by a show of hands, would simply like a, a voice vote or a show of hands to accept the nominations of these candidates? Or how many would actually like to go through the process of um, writing down their vote and then we'll collect them? So first the former, just by a show of hands. I'll, I'll take a show of hands for a show of hands. <laughs> okay, so uh, just to complete the Robert's Rules of Orders and those who would prefer to actually write it down, have us collect it? Okay. Um, the motion to accept the voice vote carries. Um, can I get a vote of affirmation for all of the candidates tonight who are running non-contested? So be it. Thank you very much. Yeah, very good. Uh, duly noted. Um, so a couple concluding remarks before we get you out of here to sign your peti the p candidates' petitions on the way out. So again, um, thank you for coming to the meeting tonight. Tomorrow we will have candidates for both the Park District Board of Commissioners and District 65, the Elementary School Board. Those will both be contested elections. We have six candidates running for three Park Board spots, and we have five candidates running for three District 65 spots. Uh, there are no open Lake Bluff positions for District 115, which is the high school. So uh, there will be no D115 candidates on the ballot for tomorrow night. Uh, one other thing, we would really um, encourage all of you to be an active part of the community and even vote Lake Bluff. We're always looking for new blood. Um, if you minimally want to hear more about it um, and be a part of our email chain, I would encourage you all to send an email to votelakebluff at gmail.com. Again, votelakebluff, one word, at gmail.com. And Robin, our webmaster, will be happy to include you to our email distribution list. Um, and again, we, our election judges are in the back getting ready to sign the petitions. As soon as I get the way from them, uh, I'll dismiss the meeting and you guys can sign the petitions on the, on the way out. And again, thanks for your attendance tonight. Appreciate it.